football season. The 7-1 Wildcats boast a high-powered offense led by quarterback Pete Del Toro and running back Dave Dewey and Billy Brooks. Del Toro's favorite passing target is wide receiver Sonny Szczynski. Last weekend, the undefeated Naugatuck Greyhounds added the Holy Cross Crusaders to their list of shutout victims, 40 to nothing. Only Watertown has dented the Greyhound end zone this year, and that lone score came in the second quarter of the season opener be between the Naugatuck Valley League schools. The powerful Naugatuck wishbone attack is keyed by quarterback Greg Murphy and running backs Jeff Bacchetti, Victor Fonseca, and John Fruin. From Veterans Field in Naugatuck, it's Seymour against Naugatuck in a crucial matchup between these traditional opponents on Cable 10 Sports Valley High School Football Game of the Week. Again, everyone, Ed Clements, Buddy Chernovitz from Veterans Field in Naugatuck on Veterans Day. Buddy Chernovitz, first place to start. Let's talk about the Naugatuck defense, 30 quarter shutout football. They're going to be tested today against a very good football team that is able to put the ball in the end zone. So whether they stay scoreless is going to depend upon a great effort from that defense. All right, let's talk uh, about the Naugatuck offense. Uh, not too shabby themselves. They might start uh, Ed Valenti, uh, Paquetti, and Fonseca in the backfield, but they shuttle in. Two uh, very fine running backs, uh, John Fruin. As a matter of fact, John Fruin was our Fitzpatrick's player of the game last week, and also uh, Rodney Butler. They give you something to look at constantly. There's five individuals that carry the ball. They're unselfish. They block very well. Seymour's going to be tested on defense. They're going to have to really play tough against the bone. They're a power team, Naugatuck, and they come right down the pike at you. And Seymour really is, didn't do very well against Brantford and stopping it, and they're going to be tested today against a better wishbone. All right, let's talk a little bit about the, what the Greyhounds have to face on defense. Wildcats like to spread you out on defense uh, on that wide formation, three wide receivers, and they have, of course, uh, Brooks, Dewey in the backfield, quite a formidable pair of uh, running backs. Yeah, it certainly is, but the weather conditions in the field are going to dictate a little bit of how much they're going to do in that spread offense. They've got to be able to throw the ball with the spread. The wind is very gusty today. It may affect the passing game, and if it does, Seymour's going to have some problems. All right, Coach, what do you think? Uh, I think that Naugatuck uh, right now, at their own field is going to be a team to beat. Uh, Seymour's going to have to come out and play a mistake-free football game, no turnovers. They're going to have to be able to throw the ball enough to keep the balance of their offense. If they can't do that, Naugatuck's going to come away with a W. And we'll be right back with Naugatuck Seymour football right after these messages. When is it? Something in this game as Naugatuck will kick with the wind. Seymour uh, deferred, and the kickoff is ready. Victor Fonseca ready to kick off for the Greyhounds. Back to Kaczynski along with Dewey. In the direction of Sonny Kaczynski at the five. Kaczynski brought down in the vicinity of the 20-yard line. As we get underway here at Veterans Field and under mostly sunny skies, very windy conditions out there. Let's take a look now at that Seymour Wildcat offense. Eddie Seymour's got to put some first downs together. They don't want to punt the football into the wind, especially right off the bat, because then Nuggetuck will enjoy some pretty good field position. They're going to have to get some first downs here. Wildcats first and 10. Del Toro throwing on first down as a receiver out there. It is caught by Szczynski at the 30-yard line. Very nice call. Szczynski just drives off the line and turns out at 10 yards. Del Toro with a little play fake to hold the linebackers and then makes an excellent throw. Right there is Szczynski catches the football very close, and it is a first down. The initial play of this football game, a first down for Seymour, and they've got to distance themselves a little bit, and that's the best way to do it. That's one thing the Wildcats have to do against the Greyhounds. They have to have that ability to throw the football. Eye formation, that is Scott Primavera going in motion. Del Toro again to throw it. In and out of the hands of Szczynski would have been a first, another first down. Andre Powell on the coverage for Naugatuck. Let's take a look now at that Naugatuck Greyhound defense. Of course, the, the defense, uh, six points given up for the entire season, seven straight shutouts, translates to 30 quarters unscored upon. Edward, I think Seymour is sending a message to Naugatuck that they are going to throw the football. 
as they attempted to hit Zizinski again. This one went in and out of his hands, but two plays, two throws. Seymour feeling they must throw the ball a little bit to win. Draw play going to Dewey. Al Terry on the stop for the Greyhounds. Dewey will come on a type of crossbucker counter back to the near side from Del Toro with Brooks leading. Pretty good play. It picks up about five, but it brings up a third and five here for the Wildcats in this initial possession of the first quarter of football here at Veterans Field. Ball is at the 36-yard line. Third down, third and five for Seymour. Early on here at Veterans Field, that's Goulet going in motion. On the option, Del Toro throwing off the option, incomplete. John threw it on the coverage, and the intended pass receiver was Szynski. Bruin had very close coverage. Szynski comes across. They're running an option and out of the option. They're trying a little bit of a throw. Good job trying to get the ball out there. It's behind the receiver, and there's going to be a penalty against John Bruin in a first down here for Seymour on the pass interference. Now they're ruling defensive pass interference, and what he mentioned, an automatic first down, a mark off of 15 yards, and the Wildcats keep this drive alive. It's underway from here at Veterans Field in Nargata. Quite a distance from last week, buddy. Temperatures last week in the upper 70s. Now the temperatures in the low 40s and a strong gusting wind out there. Bill Brooks tied up by Al Terry from his defensive end spot. Brooks tried to come back on the wind back, unable to get any penetration. Dragged down by Terry at the line of scrimmage. You'll see Brooks try and break it back to the outside. 73, Kip Anderson leading on the trap block, but good job by Nogatuck closing it down. Anderson making the tackle. There's Coach Craig Peters. His 8-0 uh, Nogatuck Greyhound. Del Toro on the option with some running room. Coming up from the secondary, John Fruin on the tackle of Del Toro. I gave Anderson a credit for a tackle. He was on the block. Terry on that last tackle. You'll see coming down the line with the guard in front. Del Toro turns outside. He takes the outside. And then Bruin comes up to stick him right at about the, looks like the 40-yard line, 45-yard line. Tough to see without the yard markers or down uh, markers on that area. But brings up again a third and five for the Wildcats. The ball now is down at the 46-yard line of Longest Hook. Del Toro putting it up. As a receiver out there, off the fingers of his receiver. John Fruin on the coverage again. Wide open. Zizinski unable to, to really drag it down. The ball was overthrown. And again, the wind probably dictating a lot of that throw because the quarterback had him open. Del Toro couldn't get the ball. Looks like he sailed on him. And into this, this very gusty wind, it's going to be difficult to throw the ball any great distance. 10 to 15 yard area because that ball will be affected by the wind. Well, the punter is a freshman, Brian Schultz. Back to punt the football for the Seymour Wildcats. And there, that ball the is going to just get, gonna get about a seven yard net from that first down mark as we punted the ball about 17 yards, and that's not a good average. But again, that wind is going to blow the ball right back, and it's going to put Nuggets up in pretty good field position considering where the Seymour Wildcats punted from. And let's take a look now at that Nogata Greyhound offense. You saw Greg Murphy there with his head coach, and they're getting ready now to get that wishbone cranked up. And there is a flag on the field, Edward, and a discussion between the officials. We'll see what it's on and what it is about. It would not be a first down, and they're going to pick it up and wave it off, so the play will start. I would guess around the 40-yard 40, 40 line. Well, we have the opportunity, buddy. Let's uh, take a look now at that Seymour Wildcat defense. This time the Wildcats go on defense. And it'll be the 32-yard line for the Norgasa Greyhound. Surprise, Edward, they're in the ball. <laughs> no surprise at all. First down, and that's... A double tight end wishbone for the Greyhounds. The quarterback is Murphy on first down. To give John Fruin off the left side for about four yards, keeping that wishbone offense on schedule. Fruin is just going to come off the left side, as Eddie said, and he will just 
put his head down and get about three and a half to four yards on that initial carry. And as Ed said again, it's right on schedule. If you can get three to four yards on every possession, you're going to be in good shape with that bone. And there again, double tight bone, and they're going to come right at Seymour all day. A ball at the 36-yard line. Greyhounds first crack with the football. Again, Fruin, Mark Primavera on the initial hit for the Wildcats. Again, basically the same play. You notice the line surge, no pulling, just straight ahead. The two backs leading at the hole. Good job there by number, looks like 77 or 19, maybe Stromello just closing it off as he got down and forced Fruin to break to the inside. But it brings up a third and about three, and it's a makeable situation here, and that's where the ball wants to be in this situation, about third and two, third and three. The ball at the 38-yard line of Naugatuck on the option. That's Murphy pitching it out. That's John Fruin again, the third straight carry. I believe he's picked up the first down, taken down by Mark Primavera from the secondary. Going to be close, very close on that. Now, whether they bring, they're going to bring the yard markers out. They came on the option. Seymour did a good job coming up and closing off the outside looked like he was going to go a lot further than he did and it's very close as the down markers are going to come across the field on that third and three Seymour did a good job closing the option we saw last week Naugatuck really didn't run the option a great deal they went to it today on a third and three and we'll see whether they were able to pick it up and they're not they're going to be short it'll be an interesting call here for coach Peters right around the 42 41 yard line he has the win I would bet that he's going to kick and keep field position, get the ball down deep, but we never know. Now the quarterback is still in there, Greg Murphy, on the fourth down and about two feet for the first down for the Greyhounds. The football at the 41. We're in first quarter action here, Telemedia's Valley High School football game of the week. Naugatuck, Seymour, their traditional battle. If Naugatuck doesn't make it, they're giving up an awful lot, especially with the win. We'll see here. It's a big ball very early in this game. Wildcats dig in defensively. That was a message very early in the first quarter as the Greyhounds on a fourth and less than one just took the ball right up the gut, ruined for about seven yards. Again, straight ahead blocking. They take the guard down, number 78, with an excellent block there for Nuggetuck. That's Kevin Corcoran. He just turned his inside man and allowed Bruins to come through before Szynski made the tackle. First down for the Hounds. Double tight end. Again, John Fruin. Fruin is, has, has had his hands on the football every offensive play for the Greyhounds. Fruin again on this, what was just called a touchdown left as the two backs lead through and Fruin comes right over the guard tackle spot. And just inside for about three and a half to four yards again. It's just a straight ahead power. Fruin following the two blocking back and puts his nose forward for about three maybe three and a half. Rich Connor is finally coming up on the tackle. Second down, second and six for the Greyhounds. The pitch. This time it's Fonseca on the pitch out. Fonseca taken out of bounds by Szynski. This time a little toss and they took Stromello right out of the play. The defense is in, number 19. He gets doubled and it allows the outside man just to come. Looks like Fonseca now, there's a double right there. That's on 22, I'm sorry. That's Primavera, and then just opening the outside up for another big six yards. It brings up third and less than one for the Greyhounds. The ball down at the 42-yard line of the Wildcats. Wildcats tightly bunched on defense. Fonseca dies for the first down from the left half back spot out of the wishbone. This time they went touchdown right with Fonseca coming over the right side. If you look at the very large crowd assembled here to watch this game, again, just to the right side, both backs. Look at Bruin just take his person and just drive him back off the football for another first down. Well, Jeff Facchetti checks in, and John Bruin uh, out of the lineup for the Nard of the Greyhounds, who, who will run at you five running backs, and they'll all get a piece of carrying the football. And that unselfish attitude and out of that offensive backfield. Well, they, they show the fullback. That goes to Valenti. Straight ahead on the first down carry. Naugatuck is not doing an awful lot with that play calling, but this time they give the ball to the fullback. First time they really haven't had the two lead backs ahead. He picks up about three yards as they come straight ahead. Naugatuck 
doing nothing that we didn't think they would do. They've come in and they're doing their base, they're running their base offense, but they're doing it as they've done all year very successfully. Second down for the Nargata Greyhounds. Quarterback is Greg Murphy, senior quarterback. He could run the football too on the option. The pitch. Oh, and the clean house over there. Yes, Bacchetti upended. Connors first to get to Bacchetti. Connors came from the inside, did a great job because they did a good good job getting to the outside and knocking people down. You watch on the corner, the two lead backs come off and will knock the corners down. It's Connors from the inside. There he is from the inside. As you see, 22 getting kicked out and number 31 being kicked in by Nogasuk, but no one picked up Connors. Connors with a big play. It's third and five, and that's not where the ball wants to be. Seymour's got him where they want him right now on a third and five, although it is four down territory. There's the give. John Fruin has been a workhorse early on for Coach Craig Peters' team off the left side. Brian Foster on the tackle. It's going to be a fourth and, and uh, short yard is coming up for the uh, Nogasuk Greyhound. Here it is again. Just a touchdown right. Fruin inside, puts his head down, follows the blocking back, and is very close to that first down yardage. It's fourth and about a yard. Nogata Greyhounds, that double tight formation. Al Carey, the tight end to the left side, and Kenny Shea, the tight end to the right side. Fourth and short. Fonseca spins, and it's going to be close. It's going to depend upon the mark. The Seymour side says they have stopped the, uh, the Greyhound. I tell you, they got inside penetration again. We'll see who gets to the football first. But as Fonseca comes across, he's hit right there slowed up and then dragged to the ground and it is very close to that first down yardage and they're going to bring out the marker. Coach Bonheimer says no and the referee still bring it out. It looks like Seymour has stopped them and they're going to just bring the markers out to verify but it looks like Seymour with an excellent fourth and less than one able to stop Nogatuck with that off tackle power. And no question about it. No question about it buddy. A full yard as the uh, Greyhounds denied it at first down, so the Wildcats early on holding uh, Nogasuk at, at bay, holding on down, and the Wildcats take over. It's 421 remaining in this first quarter, and we're going to take a break in a few moments whenever we get a chance to in this first quarter. We'll have to take a break when the Greyhounds get that football because they control us for a large segment of time with 417 left to go here in this first quarter. Football is at the 30-yard line. That goes to Billy Brooks knocking down people. The flag in the middle of all of that mess also, Edward. And while we uh, try to unravel things here, let's take our first break of the football game. We're scoreless <laughs> at Veterans Field in Nogatuck. And the penalty goes against the Seymour Wildcats, a holding penalty. Seymour does not want to be off schedule either, especially going into the wind and against a very good defensive football team, as everyone knows. That penalty will hurt them. They're first and 20 now, backed up around the 20-yard line. The football action marked at the 19 on a reverse play. Andre Powell on the defense. That was Mark Primavera and then on offense, and Primavera took the handoff and got some pretty good yardage on that first down play. Come with a deep reverse Actually, a scissors to the inside as Primavera comes back. No, it is a reverse to the deep side, and Primavera picks up about five. Does a good job avoiding the tackle there by Terry, and then gets up around the 26-yard line for a second and about 15 for the Wildcats. Good job. Wildcats have a little better speed. If one of the problems that Nogasak has is their speed, and nice throw. Del Toro completes it over the middle. That is Mark Primavera for the first down out near midfield. Seymour is going with the short in middle passes and doing very well as Del Toro just hits into the scene. His receiver will come straight down the field, catches the football, and then runs for another couple. And an excellent catch by number 82. Jacinto, excuse me, Jacinto. that was Jacinto Torres on the reception of Peter Del Toro's pass. It brings up a first down for the Wildcats. They're moving the football against the Greyhounds on the option. That's David Dewey. Dewey with some open room ahead of him. 30 yard line and finally taken out of bounds. Last man there, John Fruin. But not before Dewey has brought the football deep within Greyhound territory. Dewey comes on the option from Del Toro as the Toro comes to the near side. 
face to the fullback. The guard out in front who does an excellent job of cleaning house. And just before Del Toro gets popped by Terry, he pitches the ball to Dewey, and Dewey does the rest. As he's down around the 20-yard line, looks like inside the 19 before he's going to be run out of bounds by John Bruin. The Nuggets are Greyhounds backed up at their 19. The ball at the 19. Billy Brooks trying to go off the left side, and uh, he's not going anywhere. Led by defensive tackle, the dog of the charge, Carl Hexton, junior defensive tackle. Seymour has been able to move the football on the option and been able to throw the ball against the Greyhounds. They are not going to run the ball inside. As we see here, Brooks just tries to come back on the wind back. Anderson leading on the trap, and he is just backed up right at the line of scrimmage. Actually lost the yard. It's second and 11. Second and 11 at the 20-yard line of Nogatuck. No score. Late stages. First quarter, veteran field in Nogatuck. Del Toro taken down. Jeff Pachetti storming in from his linebacker spot. Looks like Pachetti came on a blitz. As he comes right up the scene between the guard and tackle, right between Connors and Anderson, and he takes Del Toro to the ground. Looks like another penalty marker, as we'll see. Right between the scene as the guard pulls, up comes Bacchetti, and Bacchetti will take the quarterback right there, Del Toro, down to the ground. And another penalty is going to be tacked on to this one, and it's going to be blocking below the waist. Seymour again with another mistake. This one's going to cost them 15, and they are a long way from first down yardage at the 10-yard line, right around the 38-yard line. So it's second and a mile here for the Wildcats, who will go upstairs, I would bet, right now on this. Either that or some type of reverse play. Second and long for the Wildcats after the mark off of the penalty. That is Torres going in motion on second and long. Del Toro is the quarterback. Looking to throw downfield, has a receiver all alone. Krasinski. Paul Garbarino on the defense for the Greyhounds, or is that Torres again on the catch? Torres on the catch. Torres comes across the field, and he is wide open as Del Toro finds him right under the safety, and he makes a great catch, brings the ball very close to the 20-yard line, and brings up a third and 10. And the Nogatuck Greyhounds are not doing a very good job in pass drops in their pass defense very early here in this football game. Well, the football brought down to the 19-yard line where the Wildcats have a third and ten. Deep in Nogatuck territory. In motion. That is Torres, who's caught a couple of important passes early on here. Double pass. Billy Brooks. Ten-yard line. Inside the ten and down inside the five before he's taken down by ball. Paul Garbarino. A shovel pass from quarterback Pete Del Toro. Great, great call as Brooks just sneaks up. It looks like Del Toro's in trouble. He shovel passes it to Billy Brooks, and Brooks is down inside the three to about the two-yard line. Excellent call and an excellent run by Billy Brooks, and the Greyhounds now are backed up, and they may surrender their second touchdown and be down for the first time in the season to a football team. First and goal of football at the two-yard line. Put back. Hands off inside, touchdown, Seymour. The Wildcats with a great drive as they have moved the football the entire field, overcome two big penalties, and here it is a straight-ahead play, and it is Billy Brooks. Number 48, Billy Brooks into the end zone. The Seymour Wildcats enjoying a 6-0 lead with 1-11 left to go in this first quarter, and they've done it going into the wind. That's the second touchdown Nogatuck has allowed on the 1990 football season. First touchdown allowed on the ground. Kick by Schultz is wide to the left side, no good. And so the Wildcats hold on to that 6 to nothing lead. We have 1-11 remaining here in the first quarter of play. Buddy, your observation. Eddie, that is a great drive for the Wildcats for a lot of reasons. One, they went into the win. Number two, they ran the option and were able to throw the ball really at will all the way down the field against the Greyhounds, showing that the Greyhounds have some difficulty in their secondary, and they are not with great speed to the outside, and they've been able, and Seymour's been able to exploit that with the option. Also, it puts Seymour in an advantage position because the wishbone is not a, a football team that comes back 
from deficit. And if you can stop that ball, and they're not making big plays. We say they're three, four, five. When you get them behind schedule and you get them behind, they're not a team that comes back with some, with some quick scores. So Seymour right now sits in the driver's seat, especially now that they'll be able to turn it around in a minute and 11 seconds and have the win, especially on the kicking game, which is going to pin those Nuggets up Greyhounds deeper, force them to use more of that field if they want to get in the end zone. I thought it was a great drive by Seymour, and it sends a message very early to the Nuggets up Greyhounds. Those will be kicking off for the Seymour Wildcats. Short end over end. That's Butler with the football. Butler is taken down there by Tremello, one of the tacklers for the Seymour Wildcats, along with Chris Zulo on the special team. Short kick. Butler just picks it up. And he doesn't get a good, real good blocking here as two Seymour tacklers are led by Stramello knock into the ground, and I would bet around the 35, Edward. That's where they're marking it, buddy, the 35-yard line. Tough to tell. There are no lines at all visible. Well, it's also the factor with the sun, too. A loose football. Hello, Richie Connor. Rick Connor comes up with the loose football. And there is going to come a moment of doubt here for the Greyhounds now as they are going to turn the football over to the Seymour Wildcats as the ball is pitched, he does not hold it, or ball is handed off, and it is never into the hands of Bruin. He does not have it. It bounces out. Richie Connors with the recovery. Seymour back in business, 51 seconds to go here in this first quarter. And the football, the 35-yard line of the uh, Nuggets of Greyhounds, and that's where Seymour operates. They already own a 6 to nothing lead. Del Toro holds it on the option. He's finally dragged down by Ed Valenti, first to reach him for the Nuggets of Greyhounds. Looks as if the quarterback really is not, doesn't really want the football. He does not hand on, and then he has no place to go here as he tries to turn back up and get whatever he can, but he is dragged to the ground by Fonseca and a host of other Nuggets of players and it is second and ten right at the 35. Well they're actually now buddy as we we look out onto the field it, it, it is tough to pick up those uh, yard markers it's the 37 yard line Scott Primavera going in motion a little bit of scissors action for the Wildcats David Dewey getting the first down before he's taken down by Ed Valenti well, we, Dewey comes back on a scissors, and it is a beautiful play as Dewey breaks to the outside. Again, there is good blocking on Terry, and then he just slips through some tackles before he is dragged down out of bounds very close to the 10-yard line in a great first quarter for the Seymour Wildcats. And we have played one quarter here. Sunny, cold, veteran field in Naugatuck. Our score is Seymour 6, Naugatuck nothing. Seymour Wildcats has the football at the 13-yard line after David Dewey's run to that point. Wildcats picking up the Naugatuck fumble and trying to get in for their second score. Inside handoff on first down. Phil Brooks, the ball carrier. Motion to the near side, that's Goulet, and then the straight-hand handoff to Brooks as they try and go off tackle, and they're trying to get that lead blocker who that time was Dewey, along with Goulet, at the point of attack and breaking him through the line. The new formation for Seymour is they're playing with a tight end. As again, you see him sneak the tight end up, drop the receiver back, and they're in a different set as Goulet comes to create a strong look. Second down, Del Toro has an awful lot of time, throws into the end zone, out of the end zone, incomplete. Garbarino was on the coverage. Greyhounds here, if they can bite the bullet and get away without a score against them, it is going to be to their advantage, obviously, because being down two, two touchdowns here is not good for that wishbone. Buddy Sokonicki was uh, the intended receiver, but the pass was thrown out of the end line, off the end line. Incompleted pass, third down of line of scrimmage is the 11-yard line of Nargisa. Early on here in the second quarter, plays veteran field in Nargisa. Scissors action, that is David Dewey. He this time is wrestled down. First to get to him for Timmit Jay. Jay did, defensive end spot. Jay did a good job of closing down that time where Terry did not the last time they ran this play. You'll see Shea play out and then take the blocker 
and turn it inside. Actually, no blocker. Somebody missed the assignment to allow Shea to be standing there free. And the timeout is taken by Seymour on a fourth and about seven, right around the 12 or 13 yard line. Looks like the 15, I'm sorry, right around the 15 yard line. 11 minutes left to go, and it's been the Wildcat show here in this first quarter into the second period. Right now, a very big play in this football game for both teams. Nogatuck has to stop Seymour. Seymour gets ahead by two touchdowns. They are really going to be in the driver's seat in this football game, especially with the wind advantage and the moral, moral advantage that they have in the game. Buddy, in our picture right now, that is Nogatuck's number one fan, Mr. Marty Lucas. Been around the Nogatuck uh, high school football scene for many, many years, a fine gentleman. Both of us talked to him before the game, and he was really looking forward to this one as he has a great seat right about the 20-yard line, looking at this last fourth in about seven for the Wildcats. And the Greyhounds dig in, and the Wildcats want to convert, at least get that first down and keep this drive going. You can see out to the left side, offset eye formation for the Wildcats. Fourth down, fourth and seven. Play action. It is an incompleted pass knocked down there by one of the Greyhounds. Jeff McKinney knocked down the pass on the fourth down Del Toro pass, and the Greyhounds have held deep within their own territory. Tried to sneak the back into the flat, and Bacchetti, an excellent job on coverage in preventing the completion. The Greyhounds at about the 15 yard line here with a lot of field ahead of them. In 10.55 left in this second period. So the Greyhounds take over on down, down by six to nothing. Still in that wishbone, of course, double tight end. Give on first down, goes to Fonseca out of the backfield. Goulet on the tackle for the Wildcats. Goulet standing his ground at the defensive end position. Number 87, Dewey gets kicked down and then Goulet from his linebacker spot comes up <laughs> and it picks up about two, about three yards for the Nuggets of Greyhounds on that play. Second down, second and ten coming up, and Buddy, they And stop. there you see a sunny and warm head football coach decked out in those warm duds on this very cold day. Ball doesn't feel the cold at all. Second down play, and a fine pickup. Again, that's Fonseca, Savinsky on the tackle in the secondary, but not before Nogatuck picked up a first down. Connors misses him in the backfield. You'll see 54, Richie Connors, right there, has a shot at him, can't bring him to the ground, and there's a lot of wide open area that allows number 35, Victor Fonseca, to pick up a first down on that second down carry. So the Greyhounds needing the first down, get it. Football now at the 20-yard line. The second quarter play here at Veterans Field in Nogata. Seymour leads it six to nothing. Second back through out of the wishbone. Brian Foster on the tackle. Victor Fonseca, the ball carrier. They will come on a counter. Fullback will come to the near side, and then the off back Fonseca will come back on the counter. Misdirection picks up again about four yards. Second and six for the Nuggetuck Greyhounds. That's sort of on schedule, buddy, for the Greyhounds. They'd like to get a little bit more, though, on that first down. They stay in the wishbone. Second down, nothing fancy. Greyhounds trying to get some some advantage of some better field position in this football game. Seymour's doing a good job inside in clogging up the lanes. Nuggetuck, as you look over Coach Craig Peters' shoulder, as he sends Victor Fonseca into the game with a play. The Wildcats are doing a good job of really cluttering up that middle and preventing the big, big play from the Nogatuck Greyhounds on the run game. They're third and three and a half, third and four, but Seymour right now is doing a good job of containing the big play from the Greyhounds. Football now at the 27-yard line, and the Greyhounds have a third and three. A loose ball, and Murphy picks it up, and still a loose ball. Let's see who comes up with it. A wild scramble back at the 20-yard line. Murphy tried to get it after it squirted out of the back's hands. He did not cover it, and he's lucky that the ball was recovered by him as it squirted backwards, and he just happened to fall on it. Otherwise, Seymour would have had another big turnover. 
Again, there is a miss on the exchange. The ball is picked there and is knocked away. Murphy is really knocked onto the ball and is going to bring up a fourth and twenty situation as the Wildcats are doing an excellent job of containing the ball. John Fruin will be punting the football away. The line of scrimmage now the 19-yard line. Seymour is going to have excellent field position. They're going to be well inside the 50 when they get this kick. Fruin. And there you see the effect of the win as it's flown backwards towards the Nagasa goal line. And it's down there, so the Wildcats have excellent field position. And we are going to take this time out. Seymour Wildcats, after the short Naugatuck punt into the wind, have excellent field position at the Greyhound 34, and plus that, the Wildcats own a 6 to nothing lead. Del Toro, with excellent time and protection, winds up, throws it out, downfield incomplete on a fly pattern. Andre Powell on the coverage for the Greyhound, and Szynski was the intended receiver. Szynski turned about 12 yards down the field and then took off on Powell. As we'll see, Del Toro will get a good fake here. Del Toro is going to pump fake, and as he does, Szynski will turn and then break down the sidelines. Powell on coverage right there. Szynski goes down. The ball was well overthrown. It's second and 10. The ball at the 34-yard line. Seymour has taken Nogatuk definitely out of their game plan and out of their pattern thus far. Del Toro, who can option on the option, pitches out that Dewey. He is stopped as the play is strung out wide to the near side. Al Carey first to get to him. As Anderson comes around the corner on the option, you'll see him pull number 78, or that's uh, Larkin, and the back there, Bruin comes up, plays off the block of Larkin, gets in on the tackle with help from Al Carey. Great third and 10 for the Wildcats. Good job that time of closing the option down. That's something that Nogatuck had not done. This time, uh, Kaczynski wide to the right side, Torres to the bottom of your screen on third and nine, and that is Brooks going in motion. And Del Toro winds up, throws downfield, overthrows his intended receiver, Powell on the coverage. Nogatuck has made a couple of defensive adjustments to help that secondary out, as you'll see. Brooks in long motion, then just turns up the field. Powell on the outside is one-on-one -on -one with the receiver. Ball is overthrown, but there is excellent coverage there. As you see, this time playing from behind is the is Powell on Kaczynski, and it brings up a fourth down here for Seymour, and they're going to go for it. Fourth and ten, they're not going to kick the ball and not going to try and get field position. Fred formation, three wide receivers. Del Toro has a receiver out there. He completes it, and I believe he has the first down. Powell on the tackle, and Szynski caught the pass from Del Toro. They run a little slant in a row post. It's good timing pattern, and Del Toro just drops, and he throws a strike to Sonny Szynski. Powell gives him the lane and it is well thrown and well executed for the Wildcats and it's first down inside the looks like the 22 yard line for the Seymour Wildcats there with 616 left to go in this second corner and then knocking at the door again. Buddy what a game Peter Del Toro is having for coach Paul Bonheimer's team with the options as he runs this offense that is uh, Dewey breaking it across the seam and down to about the 10 yard line david dewey for another wildcat first down and august Tuck contained it to the outside dewey just puts on the brakes and breaks it back inside del toro comes out anderson in front of him he makes the pitch watch dewey slam on the brakes here and then just cuts it back great instinct by number 32 david dewey and he's down inside the 10 yard line and the Wildcats really are dominating this football game. Well, they bring in one of those wide receivers play, uh, to play tight end. Goulet goes in motion on first down. Del Toro. Brooks barrels his way off the right side, but the left side of the Nogatuck defense comes up to meet the play. Motion by Goulet, and then the blast off tackle with the lead back. Brooks inside, picks up about three yards. He's second in goal from the five before he is dragged to the ground by the interior of that Nogasau defense. But the Greyhounds are being tested, and the Seymour Wildcats are doing an awful lot of movement, play action, optioning, and throwing that is giving the 
Naugatuck defense some fits, especially the secondary and linebacking core, in trying to cover the number of receivers that the Seymour Wildcats are able to get open into the flat area and especially into the seam. It is a second and goal at the five-yard line. Soso Nicky comes in now to play uh, tight end on the left side. That is Goulet in motion on second and goal from the five. Del Toro running the football on the option. He has stopped at the four-yard line. Good defensive play. John Fruin. I think that's 23. John Fruin. He'll come up. Del Toro on the outside option. He sees an opening as he turns the corner. Watch from the inside. Fruin right there with a great, great tackle. And he closes it off at about the four. It's third and goal. As you see Craig Peters right there, very concerned about his defense. Third and goal, the football at the four-yard line. Seymour Wildcats threatening to go up by two scores. Sonny Kaczynski out wide to the left side. In motion, that is Goulet. The give is to Brooks, and Brooks for the touchdown for the Wildcats off the left side. Billy Brooks on a straight handoff. People who have watched Naugatuck not people off the football for eight games are now watching the Seymour Wildcats do the exact same thing to this Naugatuck Greyhound football team as Billy Brooks gives a couple players a ride into the end zone. And the Seymour Wildcats have gone up 12 to nothing with 4-14 left to go in this second quarter. And they have dominated this football game. As you see Coach Sponheimer there, and he has got to be cold. But right now he has been warmed by the 12 points that his football team has put on the board. And that's Brooks' second touchdown of the day. The Wildcats up by 12 to nothing, going for two points. Offset eye formation, two wide receivers either side of the field. Make that three wide out on that spread formation. And Peter Del Toro decides to call a timeout to talk it over with the coaching staff. See Bobby Cello. At least he put the sweater on, but Seymour sending a message here that they're playing this game like it's the middle of September, and they are certainly warming up their fans as they have been able to really dominate this game through the entire first and second quarters. They have done everything, especially being able to option and throw that football, and they have put some yardage on the on the scoreboard or some points on the scoreboard and some yardage into the record book. But they have marched very consistently all day. Naugatuck has not been able to stop that offense. And really, Seymour has done a pretty good job of containing Naugatuck. And right now, being up 12 to nothing, they're going to have an advantage because Naugatuck is going to take a lot of time if they're going to score some points. They're not a big play team. Buddy, you and I were talking about this before the game, the fact that uh, uh, the weather itself with that swirling wind out there is really not uh, conducive to passing. It has not passing. affected the Seymour Wildcats, especially Peter Del Toro. The wind has not made a difference in the throwing game. It certainly has in the kicking game, but not in the throwing game. And Seymour is ready to try and go for a two-point conversion here after missing the initial extra point. Split back for the Cats. Kaczynski out, uh, out of your picture, out to the left side. And the Wildcats uh, move that slot back into a tight end formation. Showing a, a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of formation. They give it to Brooks, and he does not make it. He is shy of that goal line. So the Greyhound stops the extra point effort for the Wildcats. But Seymour has taken a 12 to nothing lead. Straight ahead dive play to Billy Brooks. We'll see how close he is if we can get a camera inside. We're not going to see. It, it looks like he is in the end zone here by about two yards. <laughs> I don't know. That was 48. It was down across the goal line, and they don't give it to him. So the score stands at 12 to nothing. 4-14 left in this second quarter. The Greyhounds now need to get an offensive drive going here. They would like, obviously, to get some points on the board, and I think it's critical for them at least to get a good offensive drive, even if they don't score. Again, we'll see this. 48 is a ball carrier. There's 48, and God, he is in across the line by at least two yards. Now, maybe he fumbled the football. That's the only reason that he could not be in, but he was two yards into the end zone. Had to have fumbled the football. Other than that, somebody blind down on that field wearing strike. Jones will be kicking off end over end, gets it down deep. Bruin at the 20, 25-yard line, and John spins his way close to the 35-yard line. And 
Let's see what the Naugatha Greyhounds can, can do. Thus far, stymied in this football game. Edwards, suddenly I can read the yard marker. As Thruin comes down the field, he will just dive ahead to about the 34, 33 yard line on the initial return. Pretty good field position for the Greyhounds, and the sun must be reflecting because we can now see those yard markers at least enough to designate spots on the field. Well, there's a huge black cloud there, buddy, and that's uh, helping us out right now. I just hope that cloud start uh, stays right there. Fonseca is the ball carrier, and Brian Foster on the tackle for the Seymour Wildcats. And that one's going to be brought back, and if anything takes you out of schedule with the wishbone, it's a penalty, and it's going to be a hold against Nugget Tuck as we will see Fonseca come, or Bruin come to the outside. And that is Fonseca, I'm sorry, and will fall down, but the hole came behind him, and it will back Nugget Tuck up to about the 19 or 20 yard line as the Greyhounds, a mistake in their offense now, really out of sequence on a first and 20. And we're going to see if this Greyhound team can throw the football because they're going to have to do something here to get some momentum back on their sideline. Well, they're still double tight end. Football now at the 23, and they've got a first and 20 facing them at this time. Straight handoff to Bacchetti. Rich Connors dogs them. There's a difference. Right now, when you look at that white and red team, the white team is very involved. You're looking at the red team, and there's a lot of guys that are not blocking to the whistle. There's a lot of guys looking around on that red team, and they are really not as intense as they have been for the first eight games. And the Wildcats have taken some of that intensity out of that offensive group of Nuggets or Greyhounds, and they are controlling both lines of scrimmage the offensive and defensive lines. This is second and a long way for the Greyhounds. The ball is at the 26-yard line in a second and 17. Quarterback is Greg Murphy. Murphy wants to throw on second down. Incomplete. Throws it out for Fonseca. Overthrows him. And Szynski on the coverage for the Wildcats. They hit Terry open down the middle, but good coverage on Fonseca is... Murphy comes to the outside. He is going to get good pressure from the backside. That's Stromello. And then he overthrows. But you'll see Terry breaking open right there in the middle. Although the player was coming off the hash, he really has two men or zone area and then just breaks to the football. But that's a pretty good route for Norgatuck because that guy has got to cover two people as the Greyhounds release him into the or to the hash mark. And it brings up a big third in 15 to about 17 yards. In motion, that is Valenti as they break the bone. And Murphy wants to throw. Rolling. And finally taken down. The field got to him. Dave Dewey from his defensive end spot. Dewey will just come up and drag Murphy down as they try and go with a kind of hitch and go to the outside. Murphy sees that he's covered. And then Dewey will come off the block and drag Murphy to the ground and pick up a bump three and a half, four yards, but it's not enough as Seymour's going to again enjoy excellent field position with plenty of time here, and Nugget Tuck is going to have to punt that ball into a pretty stiff win. And John Thuin was an excellent punter, but as Buddy said, he's going into a gale. Oh, he's going to have minus yardage on this one. And again, the punt uh, basically straight up as the wind uh, just uh, prevents it from going downfield, and It'll be a very, very short punt, and the Wildcats will have excellent field position. About eight yards on that one, about eight yard net on that, and uh, Seymour now inside, I think the 40, Edward, as the sun is out again, I think it's around the 37, with great field position, two minutes on the clock, and an offense that the Nogata Greyhounds have not been able to contain. Well, let's make it the 38, not the quibble, but it's the first down. Wide formation for the Cats. Del Toro's had all day to throw the football. Completes it to Kaczynski. Powell drags him down, but the Wildcats are knocking on the door again at the 16-yard line. Sonny Kaczynski is giving a clinic outside to Andre Powell. Kaczynski starts in and then breaks it back to the outside. He's wide open. He's got great hands. Powell drags him to the ground, but it's another big first down inside the 20 at about the 16. This time, Kaczynski goes out to the left side. Del Toro throws it out. It, uh, is it a completed pass? And yes, it is. Keith Goulet on the reception. He comes out as Kaczynski goes deep. Goulet just slides to the outside. 
Kaczynski right on the money. Goulet trying to get out of bounds, unable to do so. It's second and five around the 10. Second down. Now Del Toro looking the other side. That is Kaczynski. And Kaczynski, it's an incomplete attempt. John Fruin on the coverage for the Norton to Greyhound. So it'll be a third down coming up. Fruin does a good job, but the ball is well overthrown. Kaczynski never has an opportunity to get it. Third down and about five right around the 10 or 11 yard line. And there's the wind as it's gusting right down the center of the field through the goal post to that side, the end that the Seymour Wildcats are driving. Third down, third and five for the Wildcats. Billy Brooks, the ball carrier. Double the ball, and the Wildcats are gonna give up a golden opportunity. The ball the, gonna, go ahead, buddy. As the ball just popped out of the hands of Billy Brooks, and that is going to save the Greyhounds at least temporarily as Brooks comes on a draw play and as he comes up the middle he will be an arm will just drag that football loose and you'll see it bounce right there in your picture and it is going to be covered by the Greyhounds three people looks like 76 Hackstrom gets credit for it and it will be at about the nine yard line with 106 left to go for the Greyhounds oh. and they're going to be happy to get in here only down 12 nothing because they have been dominated by the Wildcats in this first half. I agree with you, buddy. Bacchetti was also in the area of that football. Either had to be Bacchetti or Haxton who came up with the football. First down out of the bone. Fonseca, the ball carrier. Nogasuk is taking their time out as they would like to get something here. With 44 seconds. Just off tackle power again, and he gets pretty good room as they drive ahead for about nine yards on that first down possession and the Naugata Greyhounds really have not had the football a great deal in this first half but it's been all Seymour and one of the best ways to keep an offensive team from scoring is to keep your offense on the field and Seymour has certainly been able to do that. Well buddy when I had an opportunity to talk to uh, coach Sponheimer during the week I asked him well what do you have to do coach he said hold on the foot hold on to the football and put points on the board and they've been able to do that They've had two opportunities, though, that they let slide by the board, that last one, and then they had another one where they couldn't convert inside the 20. But 12 nothing right now is a big score, especially, and I hate to overstate the field and the wind, but especially with the field and the wind, and especially the fact that the Greyhounds are not a big play team. And they're going to have to use a lot of clock to get some points on this football, or in this football game, because the Seymour Wildcat defense is forcing them to use that three and fourth down situation to get the first down. 44 seconds left. It's a second and short, second and one. The football at the 18 yard line. Out of the wishbone, out of the tight formation for the Nuggets of Greyhounds. Murphy under a rush gets it out there. It is a completed pass coming back for the reception is John Fruin. And Murphy had the presence to get off the pass. He was uh, almost ready to be sacked. So a first down for the Greyhounds up at their 30-yard line. But they've got under 35 seconds to operate in this first half. In motion, that is Fruin. That's going to be a, a penalty against the Greyhounds. Lining up with the football is Rodney Butler, Lou Alawa in the center of things defensively for the Wildcats. Number 75, Lou is a 5'11", 244-pound senior tackle. Back to the near side will step up in motion just before the snap of the ball, and I don't think he was parallel to the line of scrimmage, and it will cost Naugatuck a five-yard penalty. Seymour will decline it, and they will take the down, so it will become second and 10 with 24 seconds left to go here on about the 30 29 yard line and i'm surprised that nogatuck is trying a two-minute offense with very little time throwing into the wind and not a football team that really does well when they do throw second down second and 11 they give it to butler and butler spurts across the 35 yard line before he's taken down by rich connors just a straight ahead handoff to the fullback. Butler does a good job of picking up about five and a half yards, but it's not enough for the Northern Tech Greenhouse with only 12 seconds left to go in the first quarter or first half. And Seymour would be very happy to give them another one or two of those type of plays. Seymour 
able to do essentially what their game plan dictated in this football game, and they enjoy that 12-0 lead on account of the ability to really control the football and really to take Nog to tuck out of that base running attack, not allowing them to put or string together the number of first downs that they've been able to do in these first eight football games. So when we resume action here, it'll be a third down, third and five. The line of scrimmage is the 35-yard line, and we have 12 seconds remaining in the first half. And here at Veteran Field, before thousands of people who have come out on suitably buddy Veterans Day. Except for the wind, that already is a very nice day, and I know we're inside, don't have to face the wind, but the wind is the only negative in this day. It's beautiful sunshine. Two great football teams deciding the fate of the teams on the field. Well, Powell has a wide receiver in there, and Murphy winds up, throws it downfield, up for grabs at the 40-yard line of Seymour, incomplete. Going for the football was Mark Primavera along with Powell, but falls harmlessly to the ground, incompleted pass, and it'll be a fourth down for Nogata. Six seconds remaining. And I've got to think, buddy, a lot of people here at Nogata, so with Nogata's great start, 8 no, rather surprised and rather quiet on this side of the field. Double tight end formation. Shea and Terry are the tight end. But fourth down. Murphy on the option. He is not going to make the first down, but I don't know if the intent was just to run it out the clock because that's what Mr. Murphy has just done. We have played one half of football here at Veterans Field in Nogata, and our score on Telemedia's Valley High School football game of the week, Seymour 12 and uh, Naugatuck nothing. We'll be back with the halftime activities right after these minutes. 2000, the Seymour leads it 12 to nothing. This is our Telemedia Valley High School football game of the week. And the Greyhounds uh, deferred their opening half option. That's when they kicked off to the Seymour Wildcats. And they will elect, of course, to get the football in the third quarter. They will be into the wind in the third quarter very big key if they can't move the ball offensively they're going to have to surrender field position very early Fonseca on the return Victor is brought down in the vicinity of the 30 yard line and let's see what the Greyhounds do with it their first crack with the football Brian Foster is going to get the hit here as coming up the field is the caddy and or excuse me Fonseca and dragged down by Brian Foster right about the 35 yard line and the Greyhounds now have got to mount a drive here they've got to get this football at least into good field position or into the end zone wishbone formation with a wide receiver that is Powell and out of the wishbone a running play off the right side on the first down carry that is Victor Fonseca carrying the football Keith Goulet on the tackle for the Wildcats along with Brooks straight ahead drive but there are an awful lot of white shirts who come up the linebacker right there, Keith Goulet, fills for the down individual, and that was David Dewey, who just came down with the block, and they are closing the lanes very well in preventing the big game. They pick up about two or three, but we said on schedule is very important, and Seymour is keeping this Greyhound football team off schedule. August is back into the uh, double tight end formation, the tight formation. That is Fonseca going wild, stringing out the play. Fine defensive effort, Goulet. They come with the option inside fake to the fullback, lead back, going to make a block here on, or misses actually through and doesn't block anyone. And Goulet comes from the inside out and wrestles the ball carrier to the ground. And that's Pichetti, or excuse me, Fonseca again, and it brings up a third and very long for the Nongatuck Greyhounds. And again, punting into this wind is going to give Seymour excellent field position. They put another one in, and this football game is over. The Nuggets of Greyhounds will not come back from a three-touchdown deficit against this football team. Powell in motion. A flag is dropped as Fruin gets the pick out, and Fruin is taken down after a pickup of a pair. Connor's on the tackle for the Wildcats. Let's await the call, but you got to think against, it's against Nuggets. got to be. Motion penalty. Dramella right there to take the pit, quarterback, and then the pitch. Not a good block inside as Connors plays off. The block by number 35, Fonseca, and... 
It's an illegal motion decline, and it's going to force the Greyhounds to give the ball right back to Seymour here, opening the second half. And the Greyhounds now are going to put their defense on the field, and that defense has got to come up with a big play because the Wildcats have been able to move the ball if they can do it again in the second half. The Nogata Greyhounds are going to go down to their first defeat. They have got to get something going offensively. That has been one of the strengths of this football team, the ability to dominate along the line of scrimmage, and Seymour has taken that away from them. That deep, uh, the lone safety is Sonny Szynski, and Thrillin gets it off. Actually, a fine kick, a fine punt under the uh, conditions out here. Szynski on the fair catch, and the Wildcats will take over their first crack with it on offense in the second half. Headed about the 37-yard line. The Greyhounds adjusted a little bit on the in the first and second quarter by moving their ends to the outside. They're doing that again, which opens up a little bit of the middle, but they're trying to take away that option game. There's a give. They do it. He's going nowhere. That uh, Donaldson defense comes up to meet the play, led by defensive tackle John Berry. Very got helped by Al Perry also, as they have been able to close the running game off very well. They've not taken the counters away as Dewey tries to get to the outside, and he really has no place to go. You see a host of Nuggets of Greyhounds dragging down, second in about nine and a half. Second down for the Seymour Wildcats. Again, Dewey. And Dewey picks up about four yards on the play before he's taken down by Al Perry. Pendolfo also out there as they try and get to the outside. Brooks on the block at the end. He fights the outside. Perry gets a piece of him, then gets help from number 58, John Berry and Pendolfo drag him to the ground. It brings up a third and five, right about the 43-yard line. At the 43-yard line, third and five, as Buddy mentioned. Wide set for the Wildcats. Three wide receivers. Peter underneath throws it. And a first down for the Wildcats. Primavera caught the pass and spun free from an August of defender and picked up the first down. Mark Primavera. Mark Primavera will just come out of the backfield on a delay, and then he will make an outstanding run here as he is drilled short of the first down, breaks the tackle from number 48, Ed Valenti, and pulls ahead for the first down at midfield. Great run by Mark Primavera, the junior, 5'7", 167 bomber. On the option, it's a loose football for a moment. Dave Dewey, the ball carrier, a flag is dropped at midfield. Dewey gets it down to the 45-yard line. Let's await the call. David didn't appear to have the handle on the pitch out. You're right, Edward. He's lucky to hold on to it, but he hit a person fumbling the football and pulled it in and then broke the tackle and picked up about five. You'll see the option to fake inside the brook. Then Del Toro will pitch off of Terry. And right there, you're going to lose the ball carrier down on the ground as a little extracurricular activity and a flag will come in on that. But look the way Dewey breaks back and picks up five, but it's going to go for naught as a penalty against the Seymour Wildcats will make it first and 25. Now the Nuggets of cheerleaders trying to get their team going in this football game. Seymour leads it 12 to nothing in the third quarter. The motion that is Sonny Szynski on first and long. On a sprint walk kind of a play. That's the day Dewey. And Dewey picks up a lot of yardage almost to the original line of scrimmage. Paul Garbarino drags Dewey down. There are not a lot of believers in red out there right now. They are starting to wonder whether they can come back. They are missing tackles where Dewey just breaks through. There's also a lot of great blocks by the white. That time Anderson, number 73, with a great trap block. And Dewey is close to the initial line of scrimmage. It's make it about second and 13. But Seymour, again, is right where they left off in the first half, really dominating the line of scrimmage. Football at the Seymour, 47. El Toro with excellent time to throw the football on a fly pattern, incomplete on the near sideline. John Fruin on the coverage, and that was Torres, the central Tor Torres, 5'10", 144, senior wide receiver, the intended receiver. El Toro will drop back, trying to hit Torres on the outside, and the wind is going to take a little of this, and it's going to bring it very wide and long. The Torres really doesn't have an opportunity to get it. Brings up a third and about 13, right about the 47-yard line. 
Torres along with Kaczynski out to the left side. Goulet to the top part of your screen. Or check that out. Scott Primavera. And Del Toro aims it for his favorite target, Kaczynski, incomplete, threw in on the coverage. It'll be a fourth down for the Seymour Wildcats. They run the outside receiver, Kaczynski, on a curl, and then the inside on an out and up. Ball is well over some, but very good coverage by John Fruin right there. As you see, Torres breaking up the sideline, brings up a punting situation on fourth down the wind right at the back of the kicker, and he is going to get off a pretty good punt here as long as it's not blocked. Oh, that's the freshman kicking it away for the Wildcats. That's Schultz, and the Greyhounds are coming, and Schultz gets it off, driving Powell back at his 15-yard line. Andre Powell looking for the wall. And he's not going to get it. He's hemmed in on the near sideline. First to get to him is Kippy Anderson. There were three excellent blocks on that punt return by Nogatuck, allowing Powell to get back to the 20-yard line. You'll see the first one right here by number 84. It doesn't really get a good one there, but there's a good one there by 78. And then another one right here. And then Powell will just break back to the 20. Those were good blocks by the Nogas of Greyhounds, and they're in business at the 20 yard line. So the Greyhounds, let's see if they can generate an offense. Corcoran was number 78. He got a pretty good one there. That's down out of that wishbone. That's Victor Fonseca from his halfback spot running the football. Connors makes the tackle for the Wildcats. They've been coming off tackle with this power all year. Just inside, following the blockers, Fonseca for a good yardage, about five on that first down carry. Brings up a second in about five yards, right at about the 25-yard line. The Teddy coming into the football game with a little bit of a limp as Fonseca comes out. It's 6.45 left to go in this third quarter. And unless the Wildcats make a big mistake, it's going to take Nogatuck some time to get a touchdown here if they can get into the end zone. Out of the ball, they give it to Bacchetti. Bacchetti slides off the left side, but the Seymour Wildcats defense the run quite well, coming up to make the tackle, Mark Primavera. Come with the counter, both backs going away and trying to get Bacchetti back to the far side. Seymour shuts it down. It's a third and four. And the Norgatuck Greyhounds need desperately to get a first down as Bacchetti limps out of the football game, and he definitely has a problem with one of those ankles. Third down, third and four for Norgatuck. Double tight formation. Murphy running the football. On the option, he will not pick up the first down. Shy of it, Goulet on the stop for the Wildcats. As the Greyhounds have been frustrated all afternoon by the Seymour defense. Seymour has taken a lot of the reads away as inside comes Dewey, and then... Trying to look for a place to pitch. He cannot get to the lane, and Keith Goulet drags him down short of the first down. Murphy short of that first down. Brings up a fourth. Again, Nogatuck punting into the wind is going to surrender the ball to Seymour with very good field position as they're inside their own 30 at about the 27-yard line. Fourth and two for the Greyhounds. Threw him to punt it away. Ooh, it's it is blocked. blocked. It is blocked, and it will be a uh, no no matter, it's going to be the Seymour Wildcats football on the block punt. And with a break in the action, we'll take this timeout. You see Dewey near side and an excellent extension by that Seymour player. And we try and get the number as he just blocks the football with a great extension. Dewey will cover it. It doesn't matter if Seymour ball, they're at the 20 and they can put it away right here. Football actually at the 22 yard line. Very difficult to pick up the line markers. That's Dewey. On the far sidelines, uh, taken out of bounds by Ed Valenti. And can we go now, gentlemen, to a break? Well, we'll take our timeout right now. Our score is Seymour 12 and Naugatuck nothing. Field in Naugatuck. The Seymour Wildcats have just blocked a Naugatuck punt. They have a second and short. Bill Brooks from the fullback spot. Getting close to the uh, yard marker for the first down. Pandolfo from the uh, nose guard position on the tackle for Naugata. Straight ahead to Billy Brooks as he's made excellent yardage going off tackle. The Seymour Wildcats now can smell a W, and they are really 
driving off the ball. They have excellent push off the ball offensive line, and their backs are running with great determination. Tito Del Toro is just guiding this offense superbly in this third quarter, as he's done all game. First down at the 15-yard line. Del Toro taking it himself on the option. Del Toro just found a little hole. He was going to hand to Brooks and then continue on the option. He just may feel that there's going to be a fumble here, but he just follows Brooks and gets the football back for about five yards on an excellent run and a good decision by Peter Del Toro. He must have felt that he did not have a good exchange with his fullback and followed him in to pick up some positive yardage. Peter Del Toro has directed the Seymour offense brilliantly all afternoon. That is, Torres in motion. Del Toro, Dewey, streaking off the right side, behind the right side of that uh, Wildcat offensive line. And a flag is dropped at the tail end of the play. A lot of extracurricular activity going on down inside on the tackles. We saw a flag just come out of there a moment ago against Seymour. This is just a straight-ahead dive to Dewey as he follows his fullback on the blast. Dewey gets down for good yardage before the yellow flag comes up in the middle of this, and they're talking to Seymour, so it's going to go against Nogatuck, and it's going to move that ball very close to that goal line. Sonny Zizinski there along with Peter Del Toro discussing the options with the referee, and it will be a big penalty against the Greyhounds is it's going to be a personal foul, it's a dead ball, and it's going to put them in a first and goal situation somewhere inside the five yard line. So half the distance uh, to the goal line on the penalty. By the way, buddy, uh, we forgot to mention it, the fact that David Dewey has come into this football game over a thousand yards rushing on the season. Third down. Dave Dewey, touchdown for the Seymour Wildcats as they were inside the five-yard line. Dave Dewey for the third Seymour touchdown. Dewey just follows the fullback again. The fullback kicks out. He comes off tackle. A three-yard run. Dewey into the end zone. It is now 18 to nothing with 348 left to go in the third quarter, and I would bet that that's the last. That is the nail to the coffin here as the Greyhounds unable to move the ball on offense are not going to put three touchdowns on the board against Seymour this afternoon. But the only thing the Wildcats have not been able to do is convert on extra points. They lead at 18 to nothing. Offset eye formation. And a delayed handoff. That's Mark Primavera and Primavera dives across uh, into the end zone for the two extra points and the Seymour Wildcats lead it by a score of 20 to nothing before a shocked crowd here at Veterans Field in Nogata. Straight ahead play to the tailback as Mark from Rivera. We saw him just catch a pass a moment ago and convert a big first down. This time he gets into the end zone for the two-point conversion. Well, with a break in the action, let's go to our weekly feature. Coach's tip. Veterans Field in Nogata is the site. Score is Seymour 20 and Naga took nothing. The freshman still drills it into the end zone. Automatic touchback. It'll come out to the 20 yard line. Greyhounds have not strung together many first downs in a row. They are going to start at the 20 going into the wind with 3.48 left to go. If they can't put a couple first downs together, Seymour is going to again get the ball with excellent field position. As you look at a group of young men who have had an excellent season up until today, and there is some doubt as they've been playing this second half, first half of football, and they are not convinced that these Seymour Wildcats can be beaten, and the Seymour Wildcats are convinced that they are going to win, and they've been playing that way. Andre Powell coming out of the wishbone in motion. And they give it on a straight hitter into the line. John Fruin was the ball carrier for the Greyhound. Fruin will just come straight ahead on a dive play. And not a lot of room in there as he'll pick up maybe one or two and another penalty against the Nogatuck Greyhounds as they are self-destructing here. And really, they cannot make big plays when they are going to be first in first and 20 or first and 25, depending upon how many this is going to cost them. Again, going into the wind, they are not a good passing team, and they are even 
or, or worst passing team trying to throw into this wind. There's not even Seymour has been able to throw the ball into the jail. And so they're going to be moved back to the 10-yard line. It'll be first and 20. And this offense does not have first and 20-yard plays in it. And Seymour right now in the driver's seat with 3.38 to go in this third quarter. As you see, in that warm weather gear, Coach Sponheimer will wonder whether he's going to get that jacket on pretty soon because whatever reason he has for being in that short gear, it is cold outside. Second and 20 coming up after the personal foul against the Greyhounds. They are deep in their own territory. Another flag is dropped. This one's going to go against the far side end. The left end moved before the snap of the ball, and it's going to cost them five more, as you'll see the signal. And again, they are self-destructing here in this ninth game of the season. A very big game for both football teams. A lot on the line. The Greyhounds have come up short here in this game against a very, very aroused and talented Seymour football team who has been able to really do anything they wanted to all afternoon against the Greyhounds. And to think of it, buddy, coming into the football game that the Greyhounds had only six points scored against them the entire year. Here in this football game, 20 points tacked up by the Seymour Wilds. Well, I don't think anyone would bet that we'd be talking shutout here and it'd be Seymour that's talking shutout. On a handoff, second back through, that is Jeff Bacchetti, who carries the football. Check that Rodney Butler. Butler will come from the fullback position straight ahead and just tries to wind back, but there are too many white shirts that are not being blocked for Seymour. Goulet will get credit for putting him to the ground, but he was tripped up as he went through the middle. It's a big third and 20 at least for the Greyhounds. Throwing into the wind is going to be difficult. They don't have a big third down play unless they can get to the outside with an option or some type of a reverse play. Third down, Greyhounds out of that wishbone. Murphy wants to put it up on third down. Throws it downfield against the wind. It is almost picked off by the Wildcats at the 35-yard line. Kaczynski almost picks it off. Al Carey, the tight end, was the intended receiver. The ball got up into the wind and it just stops here as Murphy tries to get the ball deep down the middle. Watch the ball just stop and it will come about seven yards short. Zizinski stops and almost gets the interception. Ball hits the turf then bounces up but it's a fourth down. The Seymour Wildcats are going to again get the football inside I would say the 40 yard line as this is a gale right now as the kicker is going to have to get the ball. I would bet he doesn't get it to the 35. Well, throw in line drives the punt. That's about the best you can do under the circumstances. Krasinski on the other end. He's taken down by Butler and then helped out by Valenti. They're going to get it at about the 37-yard line. And Seymour with only 37. They've had a short field to go all day because of field conditions in the wind. And they have got an opportunity with 2.03 to use the wind to their advantage again. He does a pretty good job. That's Fonseca or Fruin getting the ball off and then getting a good low kick as it hits it about the 35, fumbled a little there before Zizinski picks it up and it's down at the 37. The Wildcats are in business. The ball at the 38-yard line, that is David Dewey picking his way through the line of scrimmage. And finally, he's hemmed in and brought down by a couple of the Greyhounds led by defensive end Tim Shea. Dewey starts to the right and then meets resistance and then breaks it back to the left. The Nuggets of Greyhounds have really not done a good job in tackling the Seymour back. They've been able to break and to make extra yardage after the initial hit, and it has hurt Nuggetuck all afternoon. A well, pickup of one on that first down carry for the Wildcats. Second and uh, nine coming up for Seymour. Peter Del Toro back to throw, looking over the middle as a receiver out there, incomplete. A couple of Wildcats were in the same area. John Fruin on the coverage. Might have been a mix-up. Looks like Seymour ran an awful lot of receivers into the same area. Zizinski comes from the far side across. Inside, it looks like Solkonicki will come right in the same area. There's going to be a lot of white jerseys right at the point. And the ball is not really well thrown, but good coverage also by the Nogatuck Greyhounds. It's a third down. A third down for the Seymour Wildcats. Masterful uh, offensive uh, conception on the game football plan game. Game plan has been well planned by Seymour, and they have been able to utilize to their advantage the passing and running to the outside. Peter Del Toro underneath, it's picked off. 
Eddie Valenti. Across the 45 before he's taken down by Keith Del Carl. So let's see what the Greyhounds can do with it as they come up with the turnover. Peter Del Toro knew when he released the football that it was short because he's going to be the first guy on the tackle. He did. He had excellent protection. Throws the football. Valenti with a good, good interception. And watch the first guy to get a hit on him here is number 14, Peter Del Toro. He knew that he was in trouble when he released the football. Nice job by Valenti. Best field position Nogger Tuck has had in a long time. The ball at their 46-yard line. That is Truen running the football. Unable to pick up much more than a yard. Jeff Stromello from his defensive end spot leading the defensive charge to Seymour. Stromello just sells out to the inside. Watch him come down inside the end. Just crashes inside and gets a piece of Bruin who has no place to go. The Naugatuck defense or offense has really not picked those flashing ends up all day and it's caused havoc for that wishbone attack as, as the end comes in the linebacker slides to the outside they're working a stunt an ex stunt and they're doing a good job of keeping Naugatuck off balance on the line of scrimmage. The ball at the 48 running the football is Fonseca Connors on the tackle not too early to talk about running out of bounds there's less than 30 seconds to go here in this third quarter. Time is going to be a very important factor if Naugatuck can start moving the football because they've got to get three scores here in order to get even with the Wildcats. And running that offense, we have harped on it all day. Running the ball takes an awful lot of time off the clock. And Naugatuck right now, that is the biggest enemy that they have is the clock in time and trying to get three scores with that offense. Let's set the backfield for you. Valenti is the fullback, and Fonseca, along with Bruin, are the halfbacks out of the wishbone. The quarterback is the senior, Greg Murphy, and he is finally taken out of bounds by Keith Poulet on the near sideline with 16 seconds showing in the third quarter. One advantage that Naugatuck will have in 12 seconds or 16 seconds is that wind as Murphy sets the throw. It looks like a shovel pass to trying to get the ball there to number 23 through it and then Murph can't do it and he gets to the outside and picks up about seven yards on that carry so it makes it a second and about three for the Greyhounds. Good job by Greg Murphy in getting outside after that double pass fail. It's down at, at start about the 36 yard line as they get to find Seek off the left side on the second down carry. Rich Connors from that the linebacker spot on the tackle, we've called his number awful lot of times this afternoon. Dive play, they're running a little bit of a veer now as they move the back in motion and then get the ball inside to Fonseca. As the period comes to an end, it's going to bring up about a third and one for the Greyhounds at about the 34-yard line. And we play three quarters here at Veterans Field. The Nordic of their score is three more 20, Naga to nothing. Naugatuck needs that first touchdown, and they got a good run that time by John Fruin. Again, they run in that touchdown left, and he does a great job of getting into the secondary, keeping those legs going before number 21. Got from Rivera, Mark, brother, pulls into the ground, but Naugatuck a first down. All the way down to the 20-yard line as the Naugatuck grounds out of the ball. John Fruin to the 10, to the 5, and close to the uh, goal line. Knocked out of bounds by the Seymour Wildcats. Keith Brule knocking them out there. They had an excellent play selection. As Seymour came on a blitz, and they picked the blitz up inside, and they created a lane to the outside that John Fruin will drag down right about the one, one-and-a-half yard line. The Greyhounds in business here as Seymour's in a fire drill to get their defense ready. Again, they try Fruin off the left side. Touchdown, Robita. And... That is a big, big series for Seymour or for Naugatuck because of the wind again. The Seymour Wildcats now are going to have to move the football. It is going to shorten the field down a great deal if they have to kick into that wind. And Naugatuck into the end zone with 11.37 of this fourth quarter left to play for that first score. Fruin on a one-yard carry off tackle for the score. And there is discussion, so we'll wait here as to what the referee is talking about on that play could be too many men on the field and it may be assessed later on the kickoff but we'll wait for the call well they're talking it over right now with uh greg murphy of the of Nordicus. so the penalty obviously against seymour 
Steve was trying to get that goal line unit in. A lot of guys in. coming in as Nogatuck went on a quick count. Touchdown is good. His penalty now will probably be marked. All right, they got too many guys on. It's declined, so Seymour will not get a penalty on that as Nogatuck now will go for a one point conversion. And we'll figure that they they need the three touchdowns so if they can kick the three extra points with three conversions, they will win this football game by one. Unfortunately, they still need two more touchdowns. On Tika. And now they're going to oh, need good. a two-point conversion also as the ball is wide to the right. Remember, we had that whirling wind there, and uh, Fonseca's kick has assistance by a lot. with wide of the mark, and Nogatuk fails to come up with that extra point. The score is Seymour 20 and Nogatuk 6, but the Greyhounds, who begin matters here in the fourth quarter, at least have gotten on the scoreboard. I'd be willing to bet that this ball is going into the end zone with this Gale, and Seymour will start around their 20 or at their 20, and they need to put an offensive drive together so that they don't have to surrender the football to the Greyhounds inside that 50 where that downhill wishbone attack can take advantage of you. Seymour would like to force Nogatuck the next time they have the ball to utilize a lot of the field if they're going to score again. Buddy, one thing that the Greyhounds have going for them, the fact that... Uh they do have a lot of time left in this fourth quarter. We've got over 11 minutes to play. And as you said, if Seymour is unable to move the football directly into the teeth of that wind, they'll be punting. Throwing into this wind has not been a success for Seymour or Norgatuck, but Seymour's had good success throwing the ball, and they're going to have to throw it a little bit. They haven't really run the ball except for the option very well, and right now throwing into the wind may be a, a liability. Fonseca, end over end. And we have a flag dropped on the play. It's going to be against Naugatuck. Someone was a little bit ahead of the kick for the Naugatuck special teams unit, and they're going to back them up five more yards. So we'll do it all over again. And Victor will now tee it up at the 35-yard line. Back deep for Seymour is Dave Dewey. Seymour does an excellent job on return spend a lot of time on the specialty unit and they are able to get good field position usually with their kickoff team and right now they're putting two people back deep both Suzinski and Dewey to prevent the ball from going by one of the individuals as they would like to get the ball up around the 30 to 35 yard line on this return. Alfonsica will kick it off again. Umar leads it 20 to 6. Fourth quarter action. Della Media, Valley High School Football Game of the Week. So Fonseca will get set to kick it off again, this time though from the 35, and he drills it to Krasinski. Krasinski backed up to the five. Krasinski with a speed and a lane out there. Got a big lane. To midfield, down the far sideline, Sonny Krasinski, 30, 20, touchdown, Seymour Wildcats. Krasinski, a 95-yard touchdown return on a kickoff. We said that Seymour practiced it and did an excellent job, and they just created a line of steam to the far side, and the Greyhounds, after having come and come back to a 20 to 6 score, are now the air has popped out of that balloon on the near side. It's as if he really goes untouched all the way down the sideline. He will make an excellent move right here, and then number 35 cannot stay with him. That is Fonseca, the kicker, and he just goes 95 yards into the end zone. A great return by the Seymour Wildcats. And if we get that on our replay again, as we might from the truck, you might notice Peter Del Toro on the sidelines rooting on his uh, 
his fellow Seymour player, Sonny Szynski, down the sideline. Peter, of course, uh, standing on that Seymour sideline, and Szynski has been a big play player for the Seymour Wildcats all year long. He broke a few uh, on punt returns, and this time he takes one back on the kickoff. Don Meredith yards. used to say the party is over as some of the Naugatuck fans are now starting to leave a cold side of the field, and they are moving to the exit signs with 11-18 left to go here. That was really the final nail as the Seymour Wildcats answered the Naugatuck touchdown with a 95-yard run from Sonny Szynski. And there you see some of the followers of this Greyhound football team who are going to the exit. So Sonny Szynski, Sonny Szynski has taken that kickoff after the Naugatuck uh, only score of the afternoon. Szynski gathered it in at the five, had a seam and an opening at about the 20, 25 yard line, had one player to beat at about the 45, put on the move, and straight down the left sideline, 95 yards for the tri-captain of the Wildcats. Del Toro play action for the two points, incomplete diving for the football was Goulet. <coughs> Andre Powell on the coverage for Naugatuck. Goulet, who comes in motion, will slide to the outside in the flat. Del Toro puts it on his fingertips. Would have been a great catch if Goulet was able to come up with it. Might not have even been across the goal line. You see Coach Sponheimer there talking with number 78. I think that is Anderson. And again, the two individuals, Steve Tracy, they're dressed for the day. And Coach Sponheimer dressed for what is a tradition on Seymour's sidelines and that is that they they just have a kind of uh, feeling that you must must dress in that kind of uniform and it has been successful for them as uh, Seymour teased the ball up ready to go here with 118 or 1118 left to go in this fourth quarter and Seymour owns a 26 to 6 point lead over a 20 point lead as a short kickoff is fielded there by Jeff Smith of the Nuggets Greyhounds and so the Greyhounds will have the football 11-17 remaining in this football game but that was a devastating blow to the Nuggets of Cross Kaczynski Kaczynski's 95-yard touchdown run off the kickoff well, Murphy has gotten instructions from the sidelines from coach Craig Peters Let's see what the Greyhounds can do as they have the football just outside their 35-yard line. Basic formation, double tight end, wishbone. And Murphy going back to throw. Senior lets it out. That's the receiver out there. It is caught. Al Perry at the wow. 20. Perry. Wow. Al Perry goes into the end zone. Pump the balloon back up, folks, as Naugatuck answers. That Seymour long run, that's going to be a pass interference, no question about that one. That's going to stand as a touchdown, as that ball was thrown very well by quarterback Greg Murphy as he hit his receiver in stride, and the receiver will just break the tackle and go all the way into the end zone. Well-thrown football again with the wind. Excellent catch, and then breaking out of it is number 15, Al Perry, and he goes into the end zone. And it's back to a football game here at 26 to 12, 10 49 left to go here. And we're back to talking about the two touchdowns Nuggets up need as they will line up here for a two point conversion to try and drag themselves to a 26 to 14 score being 12 down. So just like that, Nuggets again here. Murphy hitting his tight end Al Terry. Murphy wants to throw for the two point. Got him wide open. Throws it Great for the catch. two points. Deep in the Great end zone. Catch. The other tight end, Kenny, Kenny Jay. Jay. And the receivers show that they can catch it as Nogatuck now can pump itself back up. They've got to kick off again. But again, we're back to talking about the win. 26 12, they're only 12 down. Two touchdowns, certainly 10 49 left to go as Murphy just rolls to the outside and finds Shea over the middle. Great pressure inside. He throws his ball a long way for the two-point conversion. Off balance, but right there to Shea, number 11. And he drags it down. 
Billy Brooks covers him, but it's two points. And the Greyhound fans may start coming back here. They have not been believers. And they may come back to this football game because the Greyhounds have kept it alive with a big play on first down by the Nogatuck team. Well, the Greyhounds coming back and electrifying the crowd here as Al Carey gathers in a touchdown pass from Greg Murphy to pass covered in all 65 yards. 10.49 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And that extra two points, buddy. Big, big play. Or it could be a big, big play in this football game. Well, they need to convert one extra point if they can get the two touchdowns. They're going to get the ball back one, maybe two, depending upon Seymour's ability to utilize the clock and to make first down. We'll see. This game has certainly been a great football game from the standpoint of teams being able to answer the other team. On Sika. Into the end zone, Dewey is back there, and Dewey's just going to down it, and it is an automatic touchback, and the Wildcats will have it at their 20-yard line. And we've got a whole lot of football left. Telemedia's Valley High School football game of the week. 12-point margin now. This is an important series for Seymour. They need two first downs so that they don't have to give Nogget up the ball back inside the 50. The two first downs would be nice to run some time off before they have to surrender. Obviously, a drive and a touchdown would be even better on the Seymour side, but two first downs I think they'd be happy with if they punt the football from around the 35, 40 yard line. Offset formation. He pitches to David Dewey. Dewey cuts it back in and a fine carry on first down. I believe Dewey picked up a first down. Finally taken down by nose guard Pandolfo, Jason Pandolfo. Big play as Dewey just comes to the outside on a pitch and then will cut back, utilizing his speed and really his ability to maneuver on his football field. As he starts the outside, the end widens and then he just comes back up inside. Seymour stays on their block very well and allows him a lane to just cut off the blocks of the interior line. Connors with a good block along with help from others. So they're first and ten and over the 30, about the 34. Big first down carry by David Dewey, the senior running back. And David Dewey off the left side, tied up there by Carl Hexton. Dewey again tried to cut back, going against the green, and will meet resistance as he goes back to the left side. They've run this play the wind back all year. Dewey comes back, 60 Pandolfo will get a piece of him before the left side Hagstrom and the others on that left side drag Dewey to the ground. Seymour right into the teeth of that wind in the fourth quarter. Second and long for the Cats outside their 35. Again, Dewey tries the left side. Maybe a pickup of one on the play. Big third down call here for the Wildcats as it'll be third and about five, five and a half right around the 40-yard line. You'll see Dewey again follow Billy Brooks to the outside. Brooks will kick the end out. This time he takes down the linebacker, number 35, Victor Fonseca, but no place for David Dewey to go, and it's third and about six. Minus scrimmage is the 38-yard line, but he says third and six. Put back for the Wildcats. Del Toro, great handoff to Brooks, the fullback. That's going to be short of the yardage needed for the first down, and the Wildcats are going to have to relinquish the football, something Coach Paul Spahneiner does not want to do. He said if they got it around the 40, though, they'll be able to kick a straight-ahead dive inside as they try to spring Dewey straight ahead. Cut back, but short of the first down by about three and a half yards, and we'll see what kind of field position with Seymour now being able to punt the ball from the 40. 30-yard kick would be excellent, so if they can get forward about the 30, keep them down at the 30, it'd be very good, but it's a tough win to kick into, and if you get it up high, the ball is going to blow right back. Wildcat shift, hoping to get Nogata to encroach on the play, which the Greyhounds do not do. Schultz is the punter. A long count. I don't know why he's going to take the five yards here, unless they were just trying to draw the count and couldn't snap the football. Five yards in this wind is not good. You surrender here and go backwards toward your goal line is not very good. They could have got it off. They took the delay. 8.21 left to go, and they're trying to run every second off that clock that they possibly can. Back deep for the uh, Nogatuck Greyhounds is Andre Powell, 
That's a spot that's normally occupied, punt returns by Jeff Paquetti, but Paquetti has been slowed up. It's been obvious on offense. Ooh, a high snap from there. center, and right. Schultz does have the presence of mind to kick it away. It's going to roll down in the vicinity of midfield, and the Greyhounds are going to have excellent field position with the win. This is the problem that Nagasak was in in the second quarter. Every time they punted, Seymour had excellent field position, and now in the fourth quarter, Nagasak is giving Seymour some of their own medicine as the field becomes a lot shorter kicking into this win, and you only have to go 52 yards, the Greyhounds, to get that touchdown. And if they can get one more, it's going to be very interesting in the last three minutes of the football game because the Greyhounds now starting to think that they might be able to come back in this one. Running the football, that is Bruin. Bruin breaks the tackle and gets into Seymour territory down to the 47 before he finally spun down by Foster from his linebacker spot. You're watching the Greyhounds now break tackles that they weren't doing in the first, second, and third quarter. Comes right off two excellent tackles and then breaks it to the outside for about four yards and the Greyhounds now starting to get a little pumped up here as they're going downhill with the win. Fonseca along with Drew and are the halfbacks in the wishbone. Murphy rolling and now running the football. Down to the 40 and knocked out of bounds. He'll have a first down, knocked out of bounds by Stramello. Murphy did an outstanding job of avoiding a sack as he stepped back with play action. A lot of play action here. Stramello gets popped to the inside, loses his feet, and that allows Murph to get to the outside. He sees that there is no one there, avoids the tackle, and gets down around the 40-yard line, and there's going to be 15 more tacked on to this one. as going out of bounds, and a personal foul will move the ball down now to about the 15 inside the 20 to the 20, well, right at the 20-yard line. You can see there the markers as the sun starts to go down, and the Greyhounds now are really knocking at the door. And, buddy, what you've told me in the last several years, they're right on the football are the markers of Greyhounds on the first down. The oh, give that's through in the hole, down Dang. to the 10-yard line, spin to the ball. Oh, we're back here, folks. for John Fruin. They ran the veer that time. The tackles for Naga or for Seymour are diving inside. They're pinching, and he just gave the ball to Fruin. There was nobody there. And, boy, I'll tell you, this game has suddenly shifted. Watch the tackles disappear. Fruin just goes right up inside on the veer, and he makes a great cut here on Primavera. John Fruin into the end zone. And they are only six away from making this a nugget to comeback that will be remembered for a lot of years. Again, Seymour faced with that wind is going to have to run some time, get some first downs because the Greyhounds have cranked their offense up. They are back now, 26 to 27, 08 left to go, and they put three touchdowns on the board in the last four minutes. Fonseca will attempt to point after, and he drills it, will be upright. And our score with a 7 8 remaining in this football game, and it is a football game now. The Seymour Wildcats 26, and the Nogginic Greyhounds 21. Hey, we're going to take a timeout. The media's Valley High School football game of the week. And we will be standing, Buddy Turnovitz and I will be standing with the Fitzpatrick player of the game at the conclusion of this football game. And it has been a good one. Nogginic really answering back down in this football game at one point 20 to nothing the wildcats have still that lead a five-point lead and the wildcats now their game plan obviously to to try to churn out a few first downs and get some kind of field position and then hold on von Sika will be kicking off for nogata back deep dewey Suzinski, and over end dewey along with Suzinski. dewey ends up with the football and he is taken down. John Fruin. It's going to be backed up even further now as that was a penalty flag that came in from this side. Got to go against Norgatuck on some type of a clip or some type of blocking below the waist. And it's going to back Seymour right up again. And they've got to make some yardage. As you see Dewey and Kaczynski get the football. Dewey ends up with it. He gets through the first line right there. There's a clip, no question about it. At 50, looks like he got rolled up, and it's going to move them back around the 10 yard line. And uh, not an enviable spot to start your offense when you are only up by five points in going into a 
gale force wind. Your punter has not averaged more than 10 yards to 15 yards on a kick. And the Seymour Wildcats need some first downs here. They need a couple big ones. And they are backed up at their seven yard line. Still with that spread formation. The senior quarterback is Pete Del Toro. Wildcats hoping to get a few first downs, run some clock here. Straight handoff. Going nowhere off the right side. John Berry on the tackle of Billy Brooks. The Greyhound defense has come alive here in this fourth quarter as they try a straight ahead dive play that they had good success with in the first half. And there are a lot of red jerseys right there clogging it up and dragging. Looks like David Dewey to the ground for no gain. It's second and 10 at the 10. Seymour has not thrown a pass in this fourth quarter going into the win. Going right into the teeth of that win. Del Toro at the seven yard line. Second and 10. In motion that is Goulet. Seymour wants the big play. Del Toro will put it up. It is almost picked off. It was intended for Scott Primavera and almost coming up with the football, Andre Powell. Andre Powell had great coverage as Del Toro fakes inside and then will try to hit the outside just go pattern. Powell with good, good coverage. Almost makes the interception there. Receiver number 12. Check that, buddy. I missed Paul. David Solkonicki. Solkonicki was the intended receiver. Big, big third down right here. Six, 13 remaining on the clock. Third and 10. And Seymour has it pinned back at their seven. Del Toro wants to put it up. It is. Boy, I'll tell you, if it goes to the offense, it's going to be, it's a double possession here. It should go to the offense, or it's going to be incomplete. It's got to go to the offense on a double, double possession. Well, both players seem to have the football. Looks like Szynski's going to get it here as the ball is thrown on a slam pass to Sonny Szynski from Peter Del Toro. And you'll see here, as the ball is thrown, it looks like it was an interception, and then Szynski will get a piece of it. But it is going to be close enough for a measurement here. And this is a very, very big measurement right at the first down marker where Szynski caught the football. They are measuring it. And Seymour does not get it as you can see the Nuggets up hand. So on that reception where both receivers have possession, the offense will get the football. It's a fourth and less than one, probably closer to about six inches. And we will see now what more chooses to do because they have not punted the ball very far. Coach Funheimer may gamble here and go for it. John, we'll see. It'll be a big gamble, but they only need about six inches. Buddy John Fruin had possession, simultaneous possession along with Kaczynski. Of course, under the rules of football, the offensive player gets the uh, gets the football. And it is shy, as we saw in the measurement, shy inches for the Seymour Wildcats and Buddy Chernovitz is I don't, think, it, I don't think it's a bad call to go for it here with this win. I really don't. Because you would figure, Buddy, anyway, that if they kick the football, Nogget is going to have the they football haven't back kicked in the ball 20 position. yards yet, yeah, right. Seymour's going to take a penalty. And now... Seymour's taking a penalty, and they thought they had more time to call a timeout. As you see Bobby Keller running out there. They thought they had more time before they called the timeout, and now they're going to have to kick the football. I don't think they would risk it. As you see Coach Funheimer, an offensive coordinator, Bobby Keller, they were looking at the clock. They thought they had counted down to 25. They were at 23 or 24, and the referee will call a penalty now. We're going to see as they talk it over. Seymour thought they had two or three seconds left before to call that timeout as they tried to run every possible second off the clock. Discussion with Peter Del Toro and the referee. We'll see if he picks that flag up. If he does, there's going to be an outcry from this side. And he is picking it up, so. Seymour was right. They had enough time to make that timeout call. And right now, it is a fourth in less than one. You see Craig Peters there checking with him. Just goes right to the huddle. The referee says, hey, I made a mistake. It was 25 or 24. And right now, this will be a very big play. It may not determine the outcome of the football game, but Seymour needs that one or two inches for the first down and to continue the drive, not to have to punt the ball from the position that they are in on this football field. Football buddy is marked at the 16-yard line. Here's the situation. We've got 537 remaining in this football game. 
Seymour owns a five-point lead, 26 to 21. They have a fourth down coming up, fourth down in inches. They're into the teeth of a biting wind, and a wind that has greatly affected this football game. And I'll tell you, if I was Craig Peters, I would make them measure right now to make sure that that ball is exactly where it was before they stepped off the five yards. Because that could be a big key here, where that ball is at the end of this play. And if it's already a first down, because it was darn close to Steve Coach Bonheimer right there, they are going to go for it. Not a bad call right here with this win. We'll see what happens. And here come the Wildcats going for it on the fourth and inches, 537, deep in their own territory. The Nuggets, the Greyhounds dig in. Del Toro. Billy Brooks I off the right side. It. I believe that surge, but he has created the first down for the Wildcats, but let's the wait to spot. I would be willing to bet on it. Didn't need a heck of a lot, and he was across the line of scrimmage. You'll see here, pretty good takeoff and down blocks in there, and right into that seam at the tackle area, following Keith Goulet is Billy Brooks, and they're going to measure, but I think he got it, and it will give Seymour another four downs with the football. I think it's a gutsy great call by that Seymour staff as they did not want to punt into that win and they've got it by at least the length plus of that football and Seymour sidelines can take a deep breath for another four plays but they need a couple first downs here because they're just at the 17 yard line and they don't want to punt it again into this wind. It has not been a very successful uh, area of the field. Teams that have been going into this wind have done very poorly. Seymour going with the win scored their points, and so is Norgas up in his fourth quarter. So first down for Seymour at the 17. As his buddy said, the fourth and inches they decided to go for. Paid off. Dave Dewey, the ball carrier. Jeff Bocchetti from his linebacker spot. Ducks the play at the line of scrimmage. Tried to come back on the counter. Along Dewey to the far side. Brooks goes one way, and they just come back on the counter with number 73. Kip Anderson trying to lead it. No place to go as Nogatuck just closes that play down. They've seen it enough today. But Ketty along with Fonseca and others to close it off. Second and 10. Second and 10. Football at the 17-yard line. Seymour trying to hold on to a five-point lead. Del Toro's been cool under pressure. On the option, he's dragged down by Pam Dolfo after a pickup to the 20-yard line. Good job by the Nogatuck defense as Peter Del Toro came off the throw and ducked back off tackle to try and pick up first down yard. As you saw Bacchetti right there, comes up and takes him to the ground. Bacchetti playing on a bad wheel and along with help from others, 58 got in there, John Berry and Pandolfo, and it brings up a big third and nine. Seymour again doesn't want to stop the clock by throwing, but they're in a position where they're going to have to put the ball up right here. And they have thrown the football, buddy, on the few minutes to go, deep within their own territory, realizing they're going to have to do something. Peter Del Toro on a quarterback draw is going to be hemmed in at the 22-yard line. A flag what, is what down. Interesting call here because it's going to bring up a fourth down, but it's also a, a holding penalty again. Seymour and whether they want to push him back and take the chances of a third and 20 but it is going to go against Seymour you'll see the flag come in the middle as the tour runs a quarterback draw here again not wanting to risk the throw they do a good John job Barry. Barry off. John Barry does you see the flag come in way back and that's way back at about the 11 yard line so it could move them back inside the six if they choose to take it Nogatuck will take a timeout with 3.53 left to go here. And I'll tell you, unless somebody kicks a miracle kick, the Nogatuck Greyhounds are going to get the ball inside the 45, definitely. I would bet on the 40, somewhere inside the 40-yard line. Football now is marked at the 21-yard line. Fourth down coming up for the Seymour Wildcats, fourth and seven. Under four minutes to go. The scoreboard clock showing 3.53 remaining. Seymour leads it 26 to 21. And the thousands of people who have remained here have been rewarded with one of the most exciting games that we have seen in quite a few years. There you see Paul Sponheimer talking to his troops out there. And on the opposite side, Coach uh, Craig Peters talking it over with his defense. Eddie, it's been an interesting game because really, Seymour has dominated the game for almost three entire quarters with about 40 seconds left in that third quarter. Nuggets have scored, and since then, it has been dominated 
Nogatuck is dominated. You see Coach Bonheimer getting a couple minutes of discussion with his kicker as he is telling him that, I don't know whether they take a safety here, but telling him if it's a bad snap just to run the ball back into the end zone if he feels a great deal of pressure. Buddy, that's a possibility. I, I, it isn't a, a I, I'd say it isn't far-fetched either because they, they Nugget that scores it's over anyway. They may take a safety here and then get a better field position to kick off. Because they would have the free kick at the 20-yard uh, line. He gets it off. It's a low punt. It's just going to roll dead inside the 40-yard line. Well, we and said the 40. They're inside the 40 here, and it's not a long distance into the end zone. Plenty of time with 342. Nogatuck has scored two touchdowns on three plays, so we'll see what they do here. Well, the Greyhounds have it at the 37-yard line of Seymour. That's where the football is going to be marked. Seymour Wildcats, their captain in the picture a moment ago, Rich Connors, asking his the fellow teammates to dig in. Double tight end for the Greyhounds. Here we come, try to stop us off it. John Pruin is dragged down. Rich Connors gets to Pruin at the line of scrimmage. Connors right there as they came with the off tackle power, touchdown left. Nobody picks up Connors as he comes from his linebacker position into the gap and tackles Struan before he can get to into that secondary and it's a second and ten. They're in obvious four down territory so that they right now with three minutes left to go just need to crank out three yards of carry. The ball at the 36 yard line, second and nine for the Hounds on the option. On the outside, that is Fonseca. Fonseca battles his way down to the 30-yard line before he's taken down by Susinski. Good job getting to the outside with the option. Pull back inside the hold, and then Murphy comes down. Stromello forces the pitch. Almost dropped it, but Bruin does a good job. Did I say Fonseca? If I said Fonseca, I meant Bruin. John getting Bruin. to the 30, it's third and three. 2.26 left to go here in this Fourth quarter of action. The ball at the 30-yard line. Fonseca, Bruin, and Valenti in the backfield out of the wishbone. Fonseca tries the center. He gets the first down to the 25-yard line. Nogatuck has got to get that offense back in the huddle as they're looking at the clock, but there'll be two minutes left when they snap it in the ball. They'll go off tackle and right up the gut number 35 victor fonseca for the first down before rich connor's uh, dragging to the ground here at the 25 201 left to go and we're looking at that clock constantly at this time of the football game there's the pitch again Bruin to the short side of the field and Bruin is tripped up a Doesn't fine defensive effort by the wildcats Szynski came up to make the play along with mark primavera connor's all in the area Nogatuck may know something that I don't, but they are not hustling off the ball as the outside pitch takes Bruin to the outside. He does not get out of bounds. He's down around the 20, but we're down to 133, and they've only got three plays left if they continue with this pace. In motion goes Valenti as they break the bone. On the option, Greg Murphy takes it down to the 15-yard line. I believe he picked up the first down. Murphy down around the 15 they're going to take a timeout they could have utilized the down marker movement and maybe save that timeout but murphy cuts inside on the option read devere and he is down to about the 14 yard line with 121 left to go here for the greyhounds that's the second timeout they've used they may have used that third one i'm not sure that they have another one left but again buddy it was rich connors dragging down Murphy on the play, an outstanding player defensively for the Caps all afternoon. Six foot, 202, senior tri captain. 121 remaining in this football game. Football at the 15 yard line. It is a Naugatuck first down and a five point margin in this game. About the middle of that third quarter. Wildcats had taken a 20 to nothing lead, and about that time you would have thought, well, that's the football game. He talked about nails in the coffin of the Greyhounds, and they've been banging them back out and getting up and 
a lot of life left in that football team in this fourth quarter as Seymour thought they had put him to sleep, especially after Kaczynski went on that long 95-yard touchdown run. It seems like an eternity ago, but since then, the Greyhounds have just woken up, and they have come back with vengeance here as they are ready to go here on the 15-yard line. Double tight end at the 15-yard line. First down, for North Dakota. They try Fonseca. Fonseca gets down to the 10 and maybe inside the 10-yard line as the clock continues to tick down here as the Greyhounds are on the football this time. They better. They're down to 106 left to go here in this football game, and they've got to get some plays going here as they've on the six using an awful lot of time. Murphy calls out the play at the line of scrimmage. Oh, full leg. What Murphy. a ball. Oh, for the score. The Greyhounds. side of the field. Murphy just dives in on the naked bootleg. He just went all the way by himself, got outside of Jeff Stramello into the end zone, and boy, the miracle is alive here in Naugatuck. And I know one guy who can take a big deep breath is Coach Craig Peters because his football team has shown an awful lot in this third and fourth quarter of football as they have come back from what looked to be a burial in the third quarter by the Seymour Wildcats and the extra point really doesn't matter here but they are enjoying a one point and now a two point lead in this game 27 28 to 26 with 51 seconds left to go here. Fonseca converts on the extra point 51 seconds remaining and buddy I've got to think about the people that headed for the parking lot back at the end of the third quarter. They deserve to be home. They'll catch it on Table 10 tonight at 7, but boy, I'll tell you, I have not in recent history can remember a comeback such as the Naugatuck Greyhounds have just put on here at Veterans Field. And I'll tell you, there's a couple of outstanding journalists that are in the press box with us, so Steve Wilson of the New Haven Register and Ron Fletcher, who rates the high schools in New England, and uh, they are going to have an awful lot to write about this football game if any part of that two-point margin holds up. Seymour was firmly in control of this football game, and the Greyhounds, however, did not let themselves get down. Well, in all fairness, they were down, but they got themselves back up because they were down in that third period, especially after Szynski kickoff return but to the credit of this program they just got back up and they have kept coming at the Seymour Wildcats and boy they put three touchdowns on the board in this fourth quarter in there right now 51 seconds away from being 9-0 and and taking a 9-0 and record to Aunt Sony on Turkey Day and getting into the CIAC playoffs. Buddy, let me quickly thank our spotters. And yes, we had spotters for today's game from Naugatuck, Mark Fiedelbaum, and for Seymour, Mike Deep. Both spotting for us as the kick sails into the end zone, and the Cats will have the football at the 20-yard line. And just a, a monumental pass for the Wildcats down by two points into the teeth of that win and only 51 seconds in which to do something. Seymour's going to have to put it up now and with the wind again. <laughs> I don't know, we've said it a million times, but it's difficult, it's not impossible to throw into that wind. We've seen this all day. The scoring has all except for one touchdown pin at this end of the field. And here goes Seymour now with Kuzinski trying to fly down the field. It picked off the call at the 30, 20 yard line, down the near sidelines, Andre Powell taken out of bounds. And the Norgus of Greyhound will just run it out here with 40 seconds remaining. What a finish to a great high school football game. Andre Powell had some problems all day, especially early in the first half against Kaczynski. He gets a little revenge right here as he just sits in his zone. Ball is overthrown and he is there. From the 40, he will run the ball down inside the 20-yard line. And a great job by Andre Powell, who was victimized early in this game. Sits back in the zone as you see Coach Bonheimer there. His kids have played a 
tremendous football game. They just ran into a pretty good fourth quarter team here who decided that they weren't going to be beaten today. And they have come back and they are with 40 seconds left to go on the 12-yard line in command of a 9-0 record. The mission lives on. Nogathus Greyhound, Greg Murphy at the 12-yard line will take a couple of snaps. Murphy touches his knee down at the 16. And Buddy and I have just agreed on who we're going to be talking to. There is going to be a huge celebration at the end of this one. There is no question about it, as these Greyhounds have made believers of not only their fans, but a lot of people on that far sideline to see more Wildcat fans also, as Murphy will just Murphy, touch down. Touch down, that's going to do it. And that's it, the final score and a miraculous comeback for the Norgata Greyhounds. Norgata 28, Seymour 26. We will be awarding our Fitzpatrick Player of the Game Award. Stay with us right after these messages.